Wow. That was incredible. Yeah, I mean, how good was that, huh? Like I said, incredible. And I could easily go out on a tangent about how great this is for us, the audience, and how terrible of a look it looks for Hollywood about the success of John Wick Chapter 4. Yeah. And while some might say it's unfair to compare the likes of John Wick to, say, Shazam! Fury of the Gods for having such an awful box office and, to be honest, just a full-on pathetic display from everyone post the theatrical release. Or even to say compare the two to the likes of Ant-Man and the more Ants Quantumania because that film happened to barely make back its budget, and while $500 million might seem a lot to the most brain-dead of cinema-goers, for a Marvel movie with a budget of $250 million, that's like one of us being down on our luck, heading to our local casino for a full risk-it-for-the-biscuit moment with our last $10, and well, after a hard sweating night of gambling with our life savings, we left with $11 and still have to call an Uber for the ride back home. I mean, did we really win there? Fuck. No, no it's not. But where we did win was with John Wick Chapter 4, the latest installment in the series or now franchise at this point, making it a quadrilogy. Following our main protagonist, John Wick, as he again follows the events of John Wick 2 in Chapter 3, and is still under the status of excommunicado, as he still navigates the dangerous world of assassins as well as the High Order, or basically the High Council of this world, the Table. With new villain Bill Skarsgård as new French rich guy, and this isn't even in the script, but we'll be referring to him as French rich guy, because I'll be damned if I'm forced to try to pronounce his name throughout this video, or to be honest, even one time. So lock that into your brains. With Bill Skarsgård's character now heading the charge to not only kill Mr. Wick, but pretty much wipe the name of John Wick out of existence as a whole. <laughs> I know, it's actual comedy. And while obviously the action and the set pieces and the, you know, John Wick shooting people in the face is the main drawing force of the film, the main course, so to say, we gotta talk about the characters, the world of John Wick. It's all just simply so interesting to deal with. And that all starts with Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Now I'm not really the type that tries to lock actors or actresses into their roles. Like if they didn't cast Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man or Arnold as the Terminator, I most of the time still always choose the path of thinking that there's a multiverse out there where I didn't get Robert Downey or I didn't get Arnold but an actor was still cast and still did the same incredible job, and in some multiverses, even better. But with that being said, the way Keanu Reeves takes us through this interesting world of assassins and high tables and continentals, strictly through the POV of John throughout the entire quadrilogy, makes it so hard to say that he wasn't created for this role specifically. And I don't know if anybody else could have done what he's done for the franchise, the world, the lore behind it all is just so carefully thought out and given to us with such craft that there's honestly barely any exposition dumps throughout the entirety of the four films. It's like that little layer of icing that you get between a layered cake spread smoothly throughout the four films just to keep you interested in what you're tasting. And while I believe that Keanu was the main driving force for the success of the series even more than the action, the main reason why I decided to talk about the characters first is because this has to be the greatest, most memorable cast of side characters and supporting characters in the world of John Wick so far. And that's no shame to the predecessing trilogy of films. We all remember Halle Berry, or Theon Greyjoy from the first film, but this just has to be as much of a film about John Wick as it is for returning characters like Winston or Shimizu. All of these characters culminating in this journey John started after a man killed his dog in the first film leading to where we are now, and you can just kind of tell that the director felt the same way, giving each and every character their moment to shine and showcase what they can do, and how they can even survive in a world like this to begin with. The character choices that each one makes make sense, and isn't derivative or contrived, but morally gray and challenging, because of the life path that they decided to go down, and the past choices from earlier films actually have weight and gravity to them. 
unlike some franchises we know. You've got to do better, Senator. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. As well as new and interesting supporting characters that I'm sure will see rise their way up through the ranks of fan casting and projecting new John Wick spinoffs like Akira. Shimizu's daughter, who we met at the Osaka Continental, who is actually a strong female character done right, who kicks ass like she's Katniss Everdeen, and well... Man, is she beautiful. Or say the character of Nobody, who, well, is a nobody with the dog, tasked with the opportunity to kill John Wick like the rest of the world, but is blessed with the ability of actually being a character in the end credits, so he isn't plagued with the same brain-dead activity of just running up to John with a knife and just getting obliterated. Or say even the big kingpin type with the gold teeth. The world of John Wick as a whole is just simply so interesting. And it's a quality of the series that has been grown and cultivated over a time frame of the four films that has gotten to a point where it's become a part of the movie going experience. Like while we're here on YouTube, me talking and you listening, is there a world like this in our own backyard and people and a lifestyle like that that exists? Can you even live that type of lifestyle? Those are the type of lore binding questions that the John Wick franchise embeds into your mind while watching. And well, I feel like there's always just more and more to grow and adapt. But now, well, it's time to talk that action. This body count has to be absolutely ridiculous and easily some of the best sequences of action set pieces that I've honestly seen put the film. From the set piece at the Osaka Continental, to the rave in Berlin, to the roundabout highway chase, all the way up to the stairs leading up to the church, I've never seen such 10 out of 10s and 10 out of 10s in such a stacked continuous simulation like that. And while the character in the series of John Wick can sometimes be compared to say the likes of how a video game plays, it's never been more true in a film like John Wick Chapter 4, and I am saying that with the highest of praise. There's so many memorable sequences that you as an audience member walk away with at the end of the film that not even a party of three or four that you went with will have the same favorite moment or the same favorite set piece that you did. The way that the films constantly one-up themselves one after the other with the technological and weapon advancements that you'll expect from this type of world still feels so logical and still set in some type of realism that you ask yourself, wait. Why don't we have that? The choreography and the cinematography is still set to the highest of standards. Again, building from one film to the next, and because of all of the advancements, forces the choreographers and the writers to have some actual creativity for how John doesn't just immediately die, or how John is able to kill people that have such advancements from the table to seemingly be unkillable by normal methods, and it's just so beautifully done. And with the practical effects and shooting on location, I imagine it was a lot. And I mean, a lot of work. But it all just turned out to look so grounded and added the spectacle of what you were actually watching, instead of the grossly overused green screen nonsense route that most blockbuster films seem to use nowadays. And I mean, whew, that shot of the camera panning overhead of John as he makes his way through that house. Chef's kiss. When I was talking about this movie with my pops and my friends, I couldn't help but think and proceed to ask, is the John Wick franchise and the Mission Impossible franchise the last two great action, and I mean action franchises, that we have left? And if it is, that just leads back to the two exceptional casting choices of Keanu Reeves and Tom Cruise, who truly go hand in hand in the argument I'm presenting. The only other argument I could possibly make would be maybe the James Bond character in the 007 franchise as a whole. And while that franchise will never actually die, and I'm not saying that it's dead now, but if they do go with a more, um, modern approach, how will the franchise be received, and how will a more modern update be able to make its way up to the peak of what the John Wick franchise has been able to accomplish? Only time will be able to tell with that one, but when it comes to John Wick Chapter 4, I mean, 
there's really only so much fangirling I can do in this video. With an exceptional first week in box office and not really a second week in box office drop, I assume that most of you have already seen this movie. And while this video is going to drop before the release of the numbers for its third weekend, from word of mouth alone, I don't see a significant drop off in its box office numbers and its future whatsoever. So if you haven't seen this movie, grab your girl, grab your mans, grab your friends, grab your family, and go see John Wick Chapter 4. I easily give it a 10 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I honestly couldn't recommend this movie any more than I already have. And it's easily, well, actually, I shouldn't say easily, but definitely it's my favorite movie in a franchise that has literally only spawned nothing but 9 out of 10s and 10 out of 10s since its creation. I pretty much tried to keep it as spoiler-free as I could, and man, there's still so many things that I didn't touch on about this film that I really, really liked. Maybe a longer and more detailed video for the movie has to be done. But that's for another day and another idea. Anyway, make sure you guys comment down below how you feel about John Wick Chapter 4, and just for shits and giggles, leave a ranking of your favorite John Wick films. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.